also I really didn't realize that I could talk that long about just the empty makeup. Silly me, thought that I could get through empty makeup, makeup declutter, and fragrance declutter all in one video but it would have been an hour long so i'm splitting it into two so now we're going to do the deep makeup declutter and then i'll show you the fragrance stuff at the end if you haven't seen the empty makeup i'll link it i'll link it that's all like fully used up empty makeup i accumulate so much stuff <laughs> that i have to really regularly clean things out so i have a very sizable pile of stuff here to tell you about Similar to how I did the empty makeup, let's start in terms of the order in which things go on your face. I'm getting rid of this, just primarily because it's old and it's like very well used. It's the Tarte Colored Clay CC Under Eye Corrector in Light Medium. Actually a very good product, especially in my immediate postpartum when baby Lamore was a very little baby and I was sleeping a very little amount. Uh, this is actually really very good. I would consider, I guess, repurchasing it again uh, if I needed a more intense corrector. But yeah, I think this is really good. I wish the packaging were different, it's heinous, but the product is good. I actually have some yard work going on. A little tool, I guess. This is a beauty sponge, and I don't know who it's by, honestly. But I'm clearing it out because it's not as good as the beauty blender, and I really have no idea where this is from. Sorry. I have actually some other tools, brushes that I am retiring. They're a little dirty, sorry. This is a small Mahalo skincare brush. I think this is actually meant to apply a mask. The way that my makeup is organized, I have like different bags of, you know, face, face products, eye products, pencils, etc., etc. And my, I have canisters of, well, actually just one, I've narrowed everything down to one canister of makeup brushes. And so I clean that out too, or like I'm constantly assessing and editing. And I just like never use this for anything. I guess it would also make like a decent foundation brush if you use a brush to apply foundation, but this will be getting re-gifted somewhere. And then Trish McAvoy foundation brush. I just don't foresee myself using a dense foundation brush anytime soon, but this is a very, very good one. So I might actually just keep this in beauty storage in case I were to ever need it again. I am a, just, Die Hard Beauty Blender user. That's what works for my skin. That's what I think looks the best and is the easiest to use and clean. Uh, but this is a nice option. Trish McAvoy actually got her start in makeup brushes, so you know that they're good. I think it's time to move along with this. I just never reach for it. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This was, I bought this when I still fell prey to YouTube hype. This was when Charlotte Tilbury like had first launched within the first like couple months of the brand launching. And I got this, I think on Beautylish. I, I'm trying to remember even where I got it. I honestly don't remember. Now Charlotte Tilbury is everywhere, sells in Sephora, etc. I would really think twice about supporting this brand not to fall prey to herd mentality or mob mentality, but there've been many, many corroborated accounts about how problematic the company is from like a corporate beauty brand perspective. So it's certainly not a brand I see myself buying from ever again. That being said, the product itself is kind of whatever. Uh, the This always had a pink warm undertone on me and Who's ever gonna go through that much highlighter? I mean, no one. So I'm not really, I might see if my sister wants this. I have a cream bronzer product that it's time to pass along, although I got good use out of it. This is RMS Buriti Bronzer. Wouldn't buy it again. Um, the formula really kind of turned on this one and it smells bad. A lot of bronzers seem to have like a pinky red undertone. It's just not my personal favorite. So this would not be something I would buy again. It also seems like kind of shimmery on the skin. I think that RMS has since in the time that, I mean, I got this probably five years ago, they have like a specific contour, cream contour product that doesn't have the same warmth. This is obviously more like a bronzer. Cream contour, I think obviously has kind of that cool grayish undertone from what I've seen. Yes, okay. This is a small compact of the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector pressed in opal, I think. I'm afraid to open it because I think it had shattered. Yeah. 
Uh, I can count on one hand the number of times I used this. It's just way too Instagram makeup-y for me. I prefer just more subtle highlights. I prefer cream highlights generally, although there are some very pretty finely milled powder highlights I have, like the Kosas powder highlight I have I quite like. The Hourglass powders are like more my speed and this is just a little bit too much. And I never really used it. Okay, this I liked, but it's really old. It's five years old, four years old, five years old. This is the Modern Minerals, I forget the name of it, and the little sticker on the bottom has come off. Um, kind of smells like it's gone off. This is the Modern Minerals Highlight in, I think it's called Moonstone. I haven't kept tabs on Modern Minerals makeup. The, you know, they've taken this foray into hair care. This is actually very pretty. It's like a rose gold and I, I really like it. It's, it actually gives a very luminescent, luminescent lit from within glow. Very similar to some of the Ritual de Fee highlights from what I can tell. I have Ice Bow, which is a recent acquisition of mine that I'm liking, but that's more icy and this is more like warm champagne rose goldy. It's very, very pretty. Some other face products. These are two Au Natural, Au Natural powder blushes in Pink Champagne and Gilded Sunset. So I actually have a blush swatch video of all of the Au Natural powder blushes on my channel. It will be linked for you. And these were my two favorites. They're just a little too high maintenance to use. The applicator for like a loose mineral powder product, I think it's okay, but you can see kind of how messy it gets. Uh, yeah. They are not the easiest to use and you can overdo them really quickly. And for someone that already is like has a problematic relationship with blush, I just didn't feel like I was getting good enough use out of them. Pink Champagne is very close to something like NARS Orgasm, very similar. It's like a peachy pink with a gold fleck shimmer in it. And this one, uh, Gilded Sunset, is a very, very nice bronzy neutral. So really nice in the summertime, I think. Okay, it was time to move along with some cream eyeshadow sticks, a genre of product I am always attracted to. The first one I need to repurchase, it is Ombre Black Star. Again, when I fell prey to YouTube hype, this was actually something that was worth it. This is in Misty Rock. Uh, I love this. It's one of my kind of like all time favorite, easy but beautiful eye looks. Um, it pulls relatively purp like purpley brown on me. It's gonna pull differently on everybody. I am just getting rid of it because it's old. And I could tell the last couple times I used it, sometime within the last six months, that the formula was just almost sort of like crumbly and just not the same. So it's old and I just need to get a new one. The uh, other three are all by Trish McAvoy. I had these in, let me see the shades, Topaz, Dove, and Glamorous. These are a nice option. I don't think the formula is quite as good as the By Terry ones, but they were quite nice. So Topaz is kind of like a dupe for bronze perfection, I think. Never like looked quite right on me, but these shades are just very hit or miss on me. Dove is like an icy blue, which I mean, let's be honest, I was never gonna get a lot of wear out of, except to maybe around the holidays. And then Glamorous, oh, oh no, <laughs> something has happened. <laughs> this is like the color of my dreams I wish I could wear, but makes me look a bit ill when I wear it, even if I try and ground it with tons of mascara and an even complexion and black liner, it just, doesn't look great on me and I wish it did. This kind of really warm, ready mahogany color on the lids. Ugh, I die for it, but it just does not work on me. Okay, one other eye pencil, the Au Naturale Gel Pencil in a brown. It might have a different name. Really, really nice product. It's it's kind of just old. And once I got the K.R. Weiss eye pencil in my life, which I am loving, it came in the October K.R. Weiss Detox Market Detox Box, which I'm not sure at the time you're seeing this, if it's still available, I'm going to guess no. But uh, I can wholeheartedly say the K.R. Weiss eye pencils are supremely beautiful. So this is nice. It's an eco version of like a gel pencil. Okay, also time to retire the Oreo eye tint. This was an old Beauty Heroes discovery. 
this was like a gold very you know very pretty just kind of I don't even know if you'll be able to see that very pretty kind of every day all over the lid i often used this like in the inner corners as a little highlight and i actually am still using the one that this was paired with obscure the packaging of these has completely changed obscure is like one of my capsule makeup items i am actually wearing it on the lower lash line today and i think it's fantastic so these are quite nice it was actually very very difficult for me to decide to part with my lorac pro palette because I've had this for so long, hence why I need to get rid of it. I would say I got like decent use out of it. There's some pretty steep divots in cream and mauve and pewter I used to use a lot. Espresso I used quite a bit. These very shimmery colors like I never, never used. Garnet, there's another one of those like I just, similar to the Trish McAvoy one, just always wanted to wear and never could. Again, a real like YouTube hype product. This was the only one I ever had. I think they came out with subsequent pro palettes, but once I had the Aether Beauty palettes in my life, I just knew that it was time to say bye-bye. But I'm sad. It's like, this is a real nostalgia palette. Look how beat up that is. We've been through a lot. Okay, another uh, complexion product. This is Gressa Lumiere Luminous Complexion Fluid. The formula of this really went off. I think this came in the same Gressa Discovery that Beauty Heroes did some years ago. Yeah, this, whoa. The formula is so whack at this point. Um, and when it was fresh, which it was probably good for maybe six to nine months, it, it's almost like jello now. <laughs> so something obviously has gone off with the oil in it. But I liked this. The color was not fantastic on me, but the concept of these I think is nice. In general, I think products that have pigment that's suspended in like an oil or a liquid are I just think they should be sold in very, very small amounts. Like this is actually a decent size if you're gonna use it every day, but they're just, they're hard to get through because they tend to be really pigmented and there tends to be a separation of pigment from oil or liquid and they're just, they're kind of tough to use, but they can give a really pretty effect. This I wanted to mention. So you would think if you watched the first part of this, the actual makeup empties that this would have been an empty, but this is the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes travel size. And for some reason, the travel size is not the same or did not give the same effect on my lashes as the full size does. I don't know why, I guess it's just one of those things, but the empty of the full size is, you know, I go through so many of these and they kind of like, as I pull out the applicator of the travel size, it like seems like it would be the same, but it, I don't know. It didn't work on my lashes. I gave it like a week and then I was like, no, not working. I don't have time for this. Now I have several lip products to round this out. Henny Organics Rose Diamonds. I used this uh, almost up to completion and the only reason I retired it is because I have the berry, Nordic berry version of this and I prefer that to the rose scent, but I actually really like this product. It's quite superfluous and yes, you could just go and get coarse grain granular sugar and scrub your lips with it, but this leaves behind kind of like a nice oily finish and I, it's just one of those things that I ended up really quite liking. Um, I hate the lip mask. I hate it. I think it's so overpriced and I'm so bummed I spent money on it. That will be in disappointing products. I bought it when my lips were completely destroyed postpartum. I had the driest lips I've ever had in my life and I was literally buying anything to try and help them. And the Henny lip mask like made them worse and I wasted like $38. Okay, anyway, we'll, we'll save that for the disappointing products video. But I really like the lip scrub. I didn't get a ton of use out of this, the Vapor Organic Beauty Velvet Gloss in Crystal. I kind of liked this for, you can see I barely used it. Has a bit of a, I was gonna say like drugstore fruity lip product smell. I don't really mean that in a disparaging bad way, but it does have a bit of a fruit smell. And this was, I guess, nice, but I didn't really like, I tried using it as a highlight or kind of give like kind of a wet glossy look on the face, but I don't know, it just kind of never, I never really reached for it. And I just was going through my makeup bag and I was like, God, I haven't used that in 
six months so i guess i'm probably i probably don't really like it all that much these do come in tints obviously this is just clear i don't know there's other like finger in the pot lip products that i think are better and so. this is the old like first generation kosas lipstick in the shade dark room the it's kind of gone off honestly which is why it's here and i had sort of written off kosas because i ended up not really liking this formula over time it could have just been that as the formula aged i don't know i just i didn't like the way it was sitting on my lips i it was wearing off quickly i don't know i just wasn't really a fan the packaging felt really bulky i have electra now in coats the only kosas lipstick i have and i love it as a spring summer like go-to lip color so i would consider buying other kosas lipsticks but it just was time to get rid of dark room yeah even swatched i don't really like the way it looks okay let's quickly quickly do the fragrance i'm not like some people are really passionate about fragrance i am i just haven't developed enough of a vocabulary to effectively talk about fragrance i actually have a very old perfume collection video on my channel that i'll link for you and you can listen to me like i think kind of painfully talk about fragrance there are things that i use and love like the infuriate perfume solids there's an hermes fragrance that i just live and die for but here's some things that it was just time to get rid of it's also very hard for me to part with fragrance it's a very like emotional attachment case in point these these are sarah jessica parker lovely fragrance and roller well you can see how much of that i use so years ago like 2006 maybe my mom gave my sister and i sets of sarah jessica parker lovely you can see i never really used the rollerball but i used this quite a bit and i actually think that it's it's a nice fragrance like i would still wear it it's a floral but it's almost like a, a a muskier deeper kind of floral i actually still really like it it's just old and i think it's time for us to say bye bye again very nostalgic but look how the color of that has gone off this is a theory moogler angel i wore this through the latter part of college and all through like my 20s into my like i don't know i was still wearing this until i haven't worn it in a long time obviously but this was where you can go and get the bottle refilled which i did multiple times this is such an iconic fragrance that i loved okay so i have two here uh, that you can see are quite well loved harvey prince yogini does anyone ever talk about harvey prince anymore i loved this this came in a petty war box the original and this is a roller ball and a friend ended up getting me whoa it's like kind of very very strong this is almost like what i consider to be the chanel of natural fragrance the harvey princes and i still really like it but you have to be so judicious with with this or you're gonna smell like whoa i actually think it it's supposed to have yeah they're bad now in a way that like this the lovely still smells like kind of true to its essence like these have definitely shifted over time but harvey prince is a more natural fragrance brand i actually think it might have sandalwood in it which i'm not a sandalwood person but yeah i really really liked yogini a bit now this i liked for a while you can see i got some use out of it this is trish mcavoy sexy number no. nine blackberry and vanilla musk so if you like more gourmand sweet fruity i guess not not really gourmand more sweet almost like if you like the victoria's secret smells that's sort of what this reminds me of but i really liked it for a while but ever since i had a baby every time i smell it on me i don't like it i don't know if having a baby permanently alters your chemistry certain things i wore before having a baby i still really like like in infuria patchouli royale and the hermes scent but yeah this never like smells right on me anymore it could be that it's gone off it's i don't but i wouldn't think it's like three or four years old but i had a moment with it and i really liked it here's another one i liked again i would repurchase this it's just very old this is from the company vermont perfumery and it's the scent eros this has gone super gunky it doesn't even smell it actually smells very bad now gone off even more than the harvey prince ones so obviously more naturally formulated perfumes are going to have a much shorter shelf life at its height uh i wore this 
every single day i turned my sister on to natural fragrance by wearing this like i picked her up from the airport one time i even forget where i was living probably in providence she came and visited me and by the end of the trip she was like so can you get me some like natural perfume so i can smell like you do and it was a combination of some intelligent nutrient stuff i was using in my hair and wearing this so I think I ended up getting her a Vermont perfumery sampler set. I don't even know if this company still exists. This was another petty bore discovery. Oh my God, like smelling this got like kind of lodged in my throat now though and I feel like a little bit ill. Yeah, these were petty bore discoveries from like back, I think even before I had started making YouTube videos. No idea what this is. This is an unnamed fragrance sample. Nothing that smells good, so we're just gonna move it along. Uh, Mahalo Atar Ona Ona perfume oil. This was beautiful when I first got it. Actually, still smells like kind of decent. Um, this came out when the Mahalo Red My Lips Tint project launched in like 2016. I want to say it's really nice. It's like a very mm, like warm, earthy sexy rose and i'm not much of a rose person but i really i almost used this whole thing up actually oh there's maybe a third of it in there i have several uh lilabo samples that actually i might keep because i think green beauty trish actually may have sent me these santal 33 is just like it's so ubiquitous now but i had gone through like many samples of this maybe eight years ago i was wearing santal 33 I forget, I like have completely lost track of time. Yeah, everyone knows Suntal 33. And then this was Neroli 36. I might hold on to these. <laughs> oh, and then I also have a sample of Elise 41. Uh, more recently, there was a Lalabo scent that Kaveh really liked. It's the one that has Hino Hinoki in it. I liked it too, actually. They were at a hotel we stayed at. They had the, it may even be called that, Lalabo Hinoki. Very, very nice. Okay, then these are two small samples of Kahina Giving Beauty Fez and Asawira. I like these a lot. When I, like at my height of when I was experimenting with, with fragrance, which I just don't have time to do anymore. And also like I always have the baby near me and on me. So I don't want to wear a lot of fragrance, but I was doing so much perfume like layering. And these were really nice for that. Like I would layer the Vermont Eros with Asawira, which was beautiful. And you know what I'm like, devastated about i went to try and go buy a bottle of josh rosebrook ethereal which was the fragrance he did for a short period of time he no longer makes it which is devastating because i loved that and it was so beautiful layered with some of the kahina perfumes this is a liquid on the pulse points and then spraying the josh rosebrook fragrance oh i was regularly regularly getting asked what what fragrance i was wearing oh this is such a crappy note to end on <laughs> but it's just a little sample of glossy au that i had decided to try yeah no me gusta I don't, I don't think it's good i don't have anything to say about it i just didn't like it okay we made it i feel like a weight has been lifted i still have a massive bag of collective empty products so there's some empty skincare, but it's mostly body and other products like toothpaste, dental care, that kind of stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to tackle it. I might extract the skincare and do it as a podcast. So I'm in the process of recording podcast episodes so that I have a small library to release when that comes out. Stay tuned. I'm updating that stuff on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at Lamore La Musique. Thank you so much to the Lamore La Musique Patreon community who supports my work. If you are interested in lots of bonus content, it is all over there. I need to do some sort of Patreon update video to just let people know all of the bonus stuff that's over there and has accumulated over there over the last two years, I think. 25 bonus videos bonus monthly videos there are like 45 get ready with me in skincare live streams there's just a lot over there so at some point i will update you comprehensively in case you're interested in that and i think that that's it thank you guys so much for being here for supporting lamore and i'll see you in another video really soon 